My Lord, the United Kingdom welcomes recent engagement between Indonesia and the UN as part of Indonesia's Universal Periodic Review in November 2022. We continue to support a visit by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights to the region of Papua. We also recognise that a significant amount of time has passed since the visit was first proposed, but we hope both parties can come together to agree dates very soon. I thank the Minister for his answer. He mentions the Universal Periodic Review of Indonesia. He will know that, that at that review, a number of major countries like the United States, Australia and Canada called for an intervention of the UN in Indonesia and an immediate visit of the UN Commissioner for Human Rights. It's not at all clear that the United Kingdom was amongst those supporting that call. Perhaps he would be able to enlighten us. Well done. Well, I hope my answer that I've given the House today reassures the noble lord that's exactly what we do do. We do support an early visit. I'm very cognizant that this visit was first proposed under the High Commissioner uh, Zaid. Uh, he's since then been succeeded by High Commissioner Bachelet and now subsequently by High Commissioner Turk. So the, it's been pending for a long time and it's important that this visit takes place at the earliest opportunity. Is it not clear that uh, this small country is suffering uh, grievously under a colonial oppressor, Indonesia, which is busily exploiting the country's rich mineral resources and extensive forests in its own interests. Uh, will the government do all in their power, in conjunction with Commonwealth partners in the region, to get the UN to act and to act decisively? My Lords, I think what is important is that we highlight, as we do with key partners, the issues as they arise within the context of human rights and ultimately I agree with my noble friend that we need the UN and the next step is very much for the High Commissioner to undertake this important visit. My Lords, uh, it's over a year now since the UN Special Rapporteur reported allegations of extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances and forced displacement of thousands of indigenous Papuans. Can the Minister confirm whether he and even his ministerial colleagues or our ambassador in Jakarta have made representations to his Indonesian counterparts about the contents of the report. My Lords, I assure the Noble Lord we engage quite regularly. And in terms of Papua, we recently had a visit from our team on the ground. And we do use our bilateral engagement, which is in a very strong place with the Indonesian government, to raise a broad range of issues, including the situation in Papua, but also, importantly, on the broader range of human rights as well. My Lords, would the Noble Lord, the Minister, perhaps just go a little bit further in explaining why it was that uh, the UK doesn't seem to have been part of that group of eight countries which pressed for an early visit by the High Commissioner for Human Rights? Uh, it is surely reasonable to ask for a, a democratic country like Indonesia to admit uh, the High Commissioner to look into abuses of human rights. That's what they should be doing, and I hope we're going to press that very strongly. My Lords, I assure the Noble Lord that is exactly what we are doing. As I indicated in one of my earlier responses, this visit was first proposed in 2018. I remember having a conversation with the then uh, Commissioner for Human Rights. It's an important that this visit goes ahead, and I assure the Noble Lord of our full support for such a visit. Rights concerns were, were right, rightly highlighted by the Foreign and Common Health and Development Office's Human Rights Report, published last autumn for 20. 21. It made a specific uh, point of highlighting the UK government's policy of seeking equitable and fair development within uh, Papua and West Papua. But in the government's part strategic partnership roadmap for Indonesia, published last year, there's only reference to terrorism in Papua, no reference to any equitable development, no reference to human rights. What's the point of the Foreign Office highlighting human rights concerns if it does nothing about it in its negotiations with the country in, in question? My Lord, the Noble Lord uh, understates the importance of the Human Rights Report. It's something that I'm very proud that the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office continues to produce. It's focused on not just those countries with the worst records when it comes to human rights, but importantly, a condition within that report is where we can bring influence. And I assure the Noble Lord in our engagement with Indonesia, and I've said earlier, it's a very important bilateral partner, it's an important regional partner, and we engage quite widely on a range of issues of peace, conflict, and regional stability in uh, and across the region. And Indonesia is a key partner. And in all these 
uh, meetings, we raise the important issues of human rights, as I said, on a broad range of issues, and we are seeing on a broader range of human rights some progress in Indonesia, including on areas, for example, of freedom of religion or belief.